it's a beautiful afternoon coming into the evening in Gippsland. I'm at the Molito team, Frank and Lewis. Now, Frank, this is taking you and I back on a vast trip down memory lane. You've done a lot of surf fishing off this beach. I have too. It's cool, isn't it? Mate, it's beautiful. We named this place Shark Alley many, many years ago for good reason. So I'm hoping we can prove that again tonight. Sounds good. You keen to see a shark, mate? Yeah. Absolutely. So am I. Gummy sharks, school sharks, pinkies, salmon. You just never know what's going to turn up. How good does it look, mate? Oh, it's amazing. Oh. Yeah, this is incredible. Stop it! <laughs> How's that for an extended Paternoster? So when I first fished 90 mile beach 10, 15 years ago, we used to send kayaks out and paddle baits. Now we use drones. That's amazing, we can put baits out two, 300 metres and access areas that no one literally has ever fished before. It is so good. So that bait is now out 160 metres. The first bait we put out 200 metres and we can actually see the holes out there. We can see the gutters. We're in a beautiful place here. There's not a lot of wind. There's a low tide in about four hours. Our hope is that the school sharks and gummy sharks, which us Victorians just love catching, love eating, they're going to move in this garden to eat the crabs and we're going to find a few. Seriously, how good is this? Not a soul as far as I can see. Looks at my cameraman and it ain't a good look. This is about as calm as you're ever going to see the 90 mile beach. It is out of control. So what I'm doing, just flicking a little bit of burley off at the knife there, just trying to create something. Get some small fish to move in, eat this burley. The waves will come in, pick it up, take it in the gutter. It is so calm that we're not going to have these fish coming in to feed as they normally would. So hopefully we can physically create something, get the small fish, then we find the big fish. All right, so we've got the three big rods set up that the drone have taken out a really long way. And we're just going to put this one out as a hand cast just to cover all bases in case they're running in close. I'm getting bit, I'm getting bit! Oh dear! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Grab this! They're on! They're on, man! <laughs> Woo! It's taking string! It's a good fish. I saw it going tap, tap, tap. And then the rod just buckled over, almost ripped it out of the holder. This is a nice fish. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. It is so cool. My first drone fished off the beach with Perth fishing safaris, about an hour north of Perth. And I couldn't believe when I heard Robbie was catching snapper regularly off the beach. I thought, no, nah, it can't be possible. Went down, caught some epic reds, biggest fish, nearly seven kilos. I learned so much. That's the thing I love about fishing. You travel around the country, you fish with different people, you think you know a bit, and then your eyes just get opened wide up. And you think, oh, I'm going to try that myself. And I've fished Bem, well, since I was a boy. Never had the ability to cast past those breakers. And when I thought we can come down here and drone fish, I literally thought, the sky's the limit. This is so epic. Woo! What's going on? Oh, that hit. Hooked up already. Mate, I saw the whack, 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 <laughs> and then it just started losing drag, and I had it fairly tight. Mate, I'll tell you what, I don't want to burst your bubble, because you're pretty excited, but I'm not seeing any tail pumps. I'm going to call it a skate. That is so hurtful. <laughs> but, you know, so hurtful. You know, I don't, I don't care at the moment. <laughs> but you're the one hooked up, not me, so. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, it's hard with this, because you don't get a lot of movement due to the amount of line in the water. That's right. You know what, where the shovel nose, there's gummies. Exactly, we're in the right spot. The only thing in my advantage at the moment, mate, is I'm actually getting line on it. Yeah. Well, he's taking it. He heard ya. <laughs> well, Frank reckons I'm gonna be here for a while, so he's trying to help his boy try and catch a fish. Look at that. I don't care what species it is. When you're absolutely buckled, you've got sand between your toes, and you're literally sharing the beach with just a few mates, I really don't mind. <laughs> So I'm just trying to use the waves to beach this fish. It's a massive skate and it weighs a buckle. Look at it down there on the water, look at there. Oh my goodness me, look at the size of that thing. Be careful, Frankie. 
Oh, just using the waves to get this massive ray up. We're going to cut him free, let him go. My arms are sore, but it's a good workout, ready for our big fish. I learnt this rig from a beach shark fisherman many moons ago. 100 pound leader down to a big Optia snap civil. Two sinkers to really make sure it locks into the sand. A very short bit of trace. The reason it's short, it doesn't tangle. On the end, bit of eel, and that is a Gamakatsu inline big bait circle hook tenno. You want the fish to hook itself because there's that much line out there, you physically can't do it. So, eel won't fall off, short trace, we're in business. What we have is another bait about to head out into the surf. When you're ready, Tommy, off she goes. And as she heads out to sea, you will see 80 pound multi-strand fins flying off a reel. This reel takes 600 metres, so it literally allows us to fish up to about 599 metres offshore. There is nothing as good as a snag cooked on the beach, bread, bit of sauce, it is about as good as it gets. We are at the perfect time now. The sun is starting to set. This is when fish start to move in. Everything is set up. When you come to the beach, make sure you are prepared for dark. Have your headlamps ready, torches, etc. Make sure you've got fresh baits in the water because it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Oh, smells so good. And that's just the sausages. We have all our baits laid out ready for a big night. Some beautiful pilchards here, they've been salted. Some squid, arrow squid, which comes from just out there. Eel, eel is a great shark bait because it's super tough and it smells and sharks have a great sense of smell. Some little mackerel which have also been salted, whiting. That's a tailor we caught the other day, super fresh. Bit more tailor there and even some beach worm to try and catch a few small fresh fish. Everything laid out, ready for the sun to go down. I keep saying it, but I know it is gonna happen. And that's just eating the sausages. Oh, I catch fish as well. I'm sure you've all heard of the witching hour. First light and last light when it comes to fishing. That's when fishing dreams are made. I remember I wanted to catch a big silver mulloway. Wayne and it's got up early. The sun had just come up. What an incredible beast that beautiful dew was on the Hawkesbury River. Then three days casting surface baits, looking for the monster Murray cod. Rod McKenzie cast, five minutes left of the trip. The light was fading, bang, what an absolute beast. We are now in the witching hour. This is when things are about to get real. Stay tuned, because we're about to show you some beautiful Ben River fish. Yep, there's bites. When you're ready, Frankie, we're just sitting down enjoying our sausage. And this thing started taking string. A few good bites there, mate. Ooh, yes! Here we go. That's what we're talking about. Yes, Dad. There's some serious weight behind that thing. A lot of weight. Ooh, oh, good luck. Oh, I'm gonna be there a while. Good luck, mate. <laughs> mate I think ah, ah, this is ah, payback for me picking on you before. Ah, ah. Oh. It's the beast. Quick, help him! Oh, I don't think it ever knows it's hooked yet. That's, oh, oh, that's a big lunge. Mm. Oh! Come on, Dad, you got this. What do you think it is, mate? Yeah, look, I reckon it's Ooh. a shark. Look at that, it's Ooh. got some big head pumps on it. It has. It's a long way out, we've got a way to go. It's over 150 metres, so. We'll see where we go. I believe in you, Frankie. I'll probably see you in half an hour or so, will we? Sold. Yeah. I might go cook the wrestles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> believe it or not, it's only 8.30 p.m. The second lot of sausages are going on. These guys are chilling and they smell very good. Young Lewis behind me, he is out like a light, sleeping on the sand. So good to see kids absolutely wrecked from fishing and being outdoors, not playing on phones and PlayStation, etc. 
In fact, I popped into Lewis's school the other day, Lake Central's Primary. So good to see so many of the kids so excited about outdoors, going fishing. Because really, at the end of the day, I know it's a little cliche, but this is what life is all about.